This is from Vishal from Goa, India. Swamiji, when you talk about the realization of oneness while talking about consciousness in Advaita Vedanta, I assume you are strictly talking about the positive, blissful aspects related to the feelings of oneness or being one with the whole of life and humanity. How do you explain the deviant behaviors, oftentimes criminal and evil tendencies of humanity and the problem of evil within the realm of consciousness? Is there any effective remedy or solution to the problem of evil in Advaita Vedanta? All right. This is a classic question which every religion has to face, the problem of evil. Because every religion, whether theistic or non-theistic, especially the theistic religions, theistic religions talk about a perfect being, God. All powerful and perfect and good and kind and compassionate. But that does not sort of match up with the experience of the world that we have. There's a lot of suffering in the world, a lot of terrible stuff which goes on in the world. And not all of it can be cured. See, when the cat catches a mouse, it's natural. But yet the mouse suffers. There's no way you can stop that from happening. Even if you make a perfect human world, if you remove all kinds, everybody becomes a good person and does the best to be good. Still, you can't remove natural suffering in the world. So, this is the question. Why would God create a universe like this, where there is enormous amounts of incurable natural suffering, plus also awful people? who keep on adding more suffering than is necessary in this world. The human evil that's created. And us, we also create a lot of mess for ourselves and for others. We create suffering for ourselves and for others. So why would God create such a, such a world? This is called the problem of evil. Now before I go into that, an observation about what he said uh, at the beginning. Uh, he said that when you talk about oneness in Advaita Vedanta, I assume you're talking about the positive feelings of oneness and bliss and happiness and all of that. No. When Advaita talks about oneness, the oneness is not just a positive feeling. It's metaphysical. It's ontological. Advaita Vedanta, Vedanta makes the claim, we are really one. It's not just we feel one. It's, it's not a nice feeling. We are actually one. And that's what Advaita Vedanta wants to demonstrate. And based on that reality, you begin to have the feelings of oneness, you sense this oneness. It's not uh, an imagination. It's not a good thought. Yeah. A universal brotherhood, a universal sisterhood. Okay, good. But it's not like that. It's, um, it's, it's an absolute reality, metaphysical, ontological reality. That's what Advaita Vedanta claims. All right. Be that as it may, how does Advaita Vedanta, how would it respond to the problem of evil? Now, um, this is one topic I can hold forth uh, at length. I won't. I'll just uh, tell you about this book, which I've mentioned many times. Uh, the Problem of Evil in Indian Thought, Professor Arthur Herman. He was a professor of Indian philosophy at the University of uh, Hawaii. Uh, very great authority on uh, Indian philosophy. He wrote this book in which he considers this problem. If God exists, why is there uh, so, so much suffering in this, in this universe? What are the answers? And every religion has tried to give an answer. He has collected the answers from all the religions, philosophies, literature, and he has got a list of 24 answers. 24 answers. You might say, wow, so there is an answer, not one answer, 24. Why 24? Because none of them are very <laughs> satisfactory. Yeah. Example, I'll give you three or four a quick examples. So you will see that you have come across these answers at one time or the other. Um, why is there suffering? Why would God permit suffering? Well, suffering makes you strong. It's character building. So that's a character building answer. You might say, well, in some cases it makes you strong. But a baby is born and suffers and dies out of starvation or malaria or something like that. Uh, how did it make the baby strong? You can also argue. If the, that same example, the cat catches the mouse and the mouse <laughs> suffers terribly before dying. How did the mouse become strong? So you, you can always um, doubt this. And then another example is, this is the uh, most perfect world. You are saying there's a lot of suffering, but any other possible world would have much more suffering. 
So this is the least possible suffering, that the best that, so the answer is the best the God could do. So it's a very under, <laughs> it's a very underperforming God. <laughs> he would get laid off, furloughed from a job very soon in Manhattan. Yeah. And get laid off very soon. <laughs> um, so these are different answers. They have some grain of truth in each of them. A lot of it can be doubted. Um, so what is the answer from the Hindu perspective? Professor Herbin says that among all these answers, the most convincing answer is the karma theory. Why is there so much suffering? Because of causality. There are certain causes which have given rise to these conditions. Uh, there are cert certain causes which have given rise to these effects. Um, actions have consequences. So there is a strict causality which um, karma gives rise to this kind of a world, mixed world of suffering and pleasure and pain. It's not God's fault. God has created this environment and then we go through this. What is the specific Advaita answer to this? The Advaita Vedanta answer is evil is caused by ignorance. So our ignorance of what we are and what the world is, that has led to this kind of suffering. And if you want to go beyond suffering, you can. Everybody can. You realize what you are, what the world is, that it is one, one limitless existence, consciousness, bliss, you will go beyond suffering. Um, to answer it, no, take it head on, this question. Advaita Vedanta perspective is the suffering is not ultimately real. It's not denying that we are experiencing suffering, but it's more like a nightmare. A nightmare, you do suffer. It can be quite suffocating, it can be, and then you wake up out, out of it, gasping and scared and your heart pounding, and then you realize, oh, it was just a bad dream. Now, how did that help, that suffering? The suffering was there, but the recognition of the falsity of those circumstances freed you from that suffering. In Sanskrit, mithyatva nishchaya, that this world is an appearance in consciousness, you as consciousness are safe. You as pure being are safe. Ultimately it's okay. Not as you as that individual person. See, here's the thing. People say that, oh, so if I'm spiritual, then I'll be saved from suffering. That's your promise? Yes. But how? And there's a person who was undergoing to undergo an operation, a serious operation, goes to the Swami. Swami, bless me. Um, if I, uh, I have this operation coming up and the Swami said, pray to God, you, you'll be fine. And this man said, okay, so if I pray to God, I won't die? The Swami said, no, no, that's not what I mean. Uh, even if you die, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he means it in absolute seriousness. You as Atman or Brahman, uh, the body has died so many times. We've had so many bodies which have come and go. In our real nature is Atman and Brahman, which is absolutely clear here, evident here. And there is no problem at all from that perspective. From the body's perspective, there's always a problem. There's always a sickness and pain and inevitable death. So that's how it takes you beyond suffering. Um, all right. Now, look it up, that book, if you want multiple answers, how people have thought about this problem of evil throughout the centuries, millennia. Um, problem of evil in Indian thought, Arthur Herman. One thing I would like to mention before I go ahead, you know, what's the real response, whether it's Advaita or any other form of Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, whatever, or an atheist, you know, what's the first line of response? We'd always say in New York, first responder. The first response is to help. I was looking at the, the annual report of the Ramakrishna Matan Mission, our organization, parent organization in India. When I looked at that, I thought, this is the answer to the question. What is the response of Vedanta to the problem of evil? The response of Vedanta to the problem of evil, the first response, the first responder is the thousands of dispensaries, hospitals, schools, colleges, the relief activities, going and standing next to a person who is suffering from famine or flood or earthquake or fire and extending a helping hand to feed the hungry, to uh, give, provide medical treatment to the sick, uh, to provide treatment to the sick, medical help to the sick, to teach, to provide education to the illiterate. Yeah. Vivekananda said, he, he, my God the poor, my God the sick, my God the starving, 
my God the wicked. So I am going to worship God in, in these ways, to feed the hungry man, to um, clothe the person without clothes, to, uh, ed to give education to the one who has no opportunity for education, uh, to give medicines to the sick person. That's the first response to the problem of evil. Then the philosophical response comes later. That's not, a, why shouldn't that be enough? That will not be enough because you'll never ever solve anything deeply that way. If the question will still remain. After all efforts, more or less the suffering continues in the world. So you need a deep spiritual solution also. But that comes next. First, help. One young man came to Vivekananda in India and said, Swami, I close all the doors and windows of my room and sit and meditate and meditate and meditate, but I have no peace of mind. Vivekananda said, open the doors and windows of your room. Go out into the world. There is the starving man, the sick person. Go out and pour out your life in service of God in the form of suffering humanity. You will get peace of mind. Yeah. Another person, young man like that, there was a lot of sickness at that time, the plague. And um, he said, how can I get peace of mind? Swami, the Swami Vivekananda, he said, you go out and serve the people who are in front of you, actually suffering. Go out and help. <laughs> It doesn't work always because that young man said, but if I get infected, I'll die. <laughs> and Vivekananda said, there is no hope for... <laughs> That's a hopeless case. <laughs> I want to be spiritual, but I don't want to give up anything at all of... <laughs> no. 